People never get together for no reason. Even if they don't get together out of great love for one another, they still do so according to a certain rule. And it is a mathematical rule. Their two consciousnesses, when combined, need to add up to a complete unit. This is when they form a harmonious couple, two halves of a whole. In this respect, their rights, their joint rights, united rights, can be very much enhanced. Since it is said that in this world only those with a substantial consciousness unit are allowed to have rights. And each caste has its own understanding of what this unit should be. A merchant unit is of one kind, a warrior unit is another kind of unit, a major unit is yet another kind of unit. But generally it is called a unit. Therefore, until a person makes themselves independent, until they reach that point, it is going to be quite a long, tedious and painful process, because it requires you to receive the full experience along with all the bruises and stumbling. But when you meet a person who fits all of your dents and bumps, and you form one unified structure, complete as an egg of creation, then the system starts seeing both of you as a certain type of whole, instantly lifting both up to a certain level based on your caste. And as long as you remain together, this is how you will be perceived. However, what usually happens is that people begin having misconceptions of themselves. And when they reach a certain level, they start assigning all credit to themselves alone, forgetting that they have a partner. This does actually happen. A man, for example, rushes ahead, gaining societal markers of success, all the while a woman is at his side, having a secondary role. And he may actually have a hypothetical coefficient of, let's say, 0 0.8, while the woman has a 0 0.2, in which case it is clear that he is significantly smarter and more important than her, yet it is only when she is with him that he accomplishes results. And when, let's suppose, he gets rid of her and takes on some other lady that possibly has the same 0 0.8 coefficient as he does, he instantly experiences a loss in rights, because the system will not add the two of them up to a unit. He's a 0 0.8, She's a 0 0.8, which makes 1.6. The system will not add a 0 0.4, it will take away 0 0.6. Respectively, their cumulative reason coefficient plummets down and both the man and the woman start being unsuccessful. It is pure arithmetic, very easy actually. This is why when a man and a woman are brought together by, let's call them guardian angels, and it is done correctly, it is very much noticeable they begin to present a united front and act accordingly. They succeed at everything, be it in terms of luck, health, whatever they think of reaches certain stages of realization. If they understand that they owe this to each other, then everything is good. But as soon as the me first, me better thing starts, that is when certain disappointment is bound to happen. But this is not an example of karmic partner. This is, so to say, your luck, a compliment that makes you whole. Unluckily, ladies and gentlemen, a karmic partner has a different function. It is your rival, a rival in the race to unity. In other words, as you came to this world, you actually had a karmic partner, a doppelganger of sorts, and your consciousnesses, if combined, would form one unit. It is one of the conditions of reincarnation. Yes, such condition exists. Who the person is, where she lives, what God she prays to, nobody knows. What if you meet him? Horrible. It would actually be a program glitch. The two shouldn't meet, absolutely mustn't. Because when two such creatures get close to one another, one of them will necessarily start experiencing disasters, that is certain. Because the one who is even a slightest bit stronger starts devouring the consciousness of the one who is weaker. Therefore, God forbid anyone have this meeting. This is what they'd call bad luck. It means a glitch in the program. I do, by the way, remember a few such glitches recently happening. If we talk about this using the language of tarot cards, then this state of getting close to your karmic doppelganger and the attempt of understanding who he or she is corresponds to the 15th arcana, the devil, plus the pages. If anyone practices tarot, it is possible to determine this through these channels, these portals. If you can't, then come to my lectures. We will determine this together. Someday. And it is said that the two of them should compensate one another to add up to a unit. One is a resource for the other. 
In terms of existential volume, if the first one grows, then the second one begins to fall. That is, when one of them gathers the necessary additional existential volume, not from a general resource, but from a specific person who happened to be an outsider. This is a direct requirement of the Earth Goddess. She says natural selection has to take place. Give me this natural selection, at least between two people. Someone should be stronger, someone should be weaker. This is why the system tries to separate these people as far from one another as possible, in order not to provoke either one to devour the consciousness of the other. Each one of them lands in their own social environment, each one gets a partner that completes them in the social world to a single unit and allows them to develop in a social sense. And this is not a social karmic partner, this is a spiritual karmic partner and the soul of one has to prevail over the soul of the other. Stories about how two halves of one whole met, got together and became one, such as two karmic partners falling in love, that will be in the category of bedtime stories. A nice story that unluckily doesn't match reality, such as the Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. It is surely nice to listen, but you won't see it in real life. In other words, everyone has a karmic partner, absolutely everyone. We are born under this condition. The system says that it must be this way, and the system also says that it is better if the two don't know each other. For this reason, they will be sorted into different countries, different religions, and different systems. There is only one rule, they both belong to the same caste. This means that if you're a warrior, he's a warrior, if you're a merchant, he's a merchant, if you're a laborer, he's a laborer as well. Beyond the warrior level, after passing the warrior initiation within the caste and growing to the level of a ruler or the level of a magus, one has the right to incarnate without a karmic twin. In this case, this right appears because the incarnation always takes place by one's own will and never by force. These are the rules. Usually such single-person complete units are rare. What to do if you're not a complete unit and you haven't been able to create a complete unit in your life this far? In terms of self-development, is it better to stay single or keep changing partners to make this possible? Ideally, it would be certainly better to try and grow your own consciousness, which means staying single and accumulating the necessary experience. However, the system in which you are living will not allow you to stay as an incomplete consciousness. It will try to complete you in one way or another. Either you do it yourself or the system will do it for you. But how? By including you into an egregor, because an egregor is also a unit. It is not composed of a couple, but of many consciousnesses instead. Each of them completes another to a whole. They do it all together. This is how an egregor is formed. The weaker the egregor, the lower its hierarchical position. The egregor of family, for example, consists of two, three people. They complete each other to one whole. The egregor of a workplace, 20, 30 people. They complete one another to one whole. A nation, several millions. They complete each other to the one whole. A religious egregor, a couple of billions. They complete each other to one whole. One unit remains one unit, just on a different level. Can we roughly say that it is the system that selects a business or life partner for someone in order for a person to have the ability to interact with other groups or with another person? With groups, always with groups. The system will not invest into a person-to-person -person interaction algorithm, meaning it is not interested in creating a relationship between two people. It's too little and not large-scale enough. It would rather weave a network for thousand people and if one out of thousand falls out of the plan, the system itself won't suffer.